Praise God. Hallelujah. Whoa. You know, when you just serve Jesus, you know when you feel a great sense of the anointing. And that's just how I feel. Praise God. Of course, it's beyond the feelings, but, you know, it just... This brother will not allow us, so just leave that brother. Praise God. Just quench that brother. <laughs> Praise God. Are you ready for business? Praise God. So let me start by exposing people. How many of us are in a relationship here? Even the one that I have not told pastor. <laughs> That's why I say, let me start by exposing people. Ah, pastor, you're not waving very well. You're not doing pastor in the drama. Wave now. Let's see the hand. Pastor. Pastor. Why are you put any attention on her like this? Oh, she's not pastor. Oh, you forgot you're the pastor in the play. Is, is he here? Is he here? He's not here. How many years ago did he catch you? Almost three years. So you are, clo- you are closer to the other side now than the other side. My God. Okay, let me not put on the spot. <laughs> Praise God. So leave all these long things they read. Uchuli Okutepa is my name. And the husband of one female wife, right? My wife was born a woman originally. Okay. <laughs> so she's a woman by creation, not by construction. Uh, she was not Julius. Uh, she's Julia. Do you understand? Uh-huh. I met her a little over 20 years ago, first in university. Um, it's been 12 years plus now of marriage. And um, December, it'll be 13. Clap. It's good to clap. Because if I minus 13 years from some of you, you will just go down like this. Do you understand? So, <laughs> I praise God. Uh, I love her now more than I love her in the past. That's the truth. And it's not just a preacher talking. It's the truth. Do you get? Uh, and there's a part to it without. Praise God. Right? So, um, I tell people, anybody can create the reality they want. Because my parents were separated. I was eight divorced. I was ten. I've had four mothers. I'm a very experienced stepson. As we speak, I'm even a stepson, okay? So, uh, uh, I, I love something I've been seeing on social media lately. Uh, when people say, stop complaining about your background, you're now in the background. Do you understand? So, uh, our realities are ours to create. So, I have a list of plenty questions that have come through. So, I, I'm going to do something to keep it simple and keep it very, very direct for us. I'm going to teach briefly. Then I'm going to use the questions to teach. Do you get what I mean? So that we are able to communicate in very uh, relatable terms. So, 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 Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the privilege to share fellowship. I ask that you anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations I bring. That at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The most abused institution in the world today is the marriage institution. No institution is as abused as it. And they are... There are so many reasons why we abuse it, all right? Um, And the reason why it's under so much attack is because it's God's central institution for man's purpose in life. It's God's central institution. It's so central. I mean, it's at the center of all that God wants to do with man on earth. And that's why that's the first institution God, you know, uh, refers to, reflects, creates, um, references when he begins to talk about man. Because when you go back to Genesis, and he says, let's make man an image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of that. The first institution he talks about is the home. He says, let them. So the conversation of mankind began in the plural sense. It did not begin in the singular sense. All right? I'm just laying foundation for where we are headed. Because speaking to you, uh, my, 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 the impression in my heart is to say, you know what? You desire a good thing, but you can make a mess of that same desire. So the desire is not the problem. Like Mark 11, 24 says, what things you I desire, when you pray, believe, you receive, you shall have. God wants you to give you a desire, but what are you actually desiring? Do you get what I mean? So, now, there are two ways that Satan attacks anything God. Either by stopping it or corrupting it. 
So when Satan realizes that you are going to get married anyway, he wants to corrupt the process. Because until you understand that it's not just about, um, I want to get it, I want to get it, I want to get it, I want to get it. Like I was teaching the parenting forum recently and I said that a lot of people are trying to bequeath to children wealth that are not trained. Because wealth in the hands of an untrained child is, is destruction. So, you know, this parent is focused on the money. In fact, they quote scriptures. Because a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. No, it's not the inheritance that's the problem. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go when he is old. Because my security for when they are old is the training I have given. Do you get what I mean? So, you have a lot of single people. And this is how I told my wife back then when a university student. And we're just, you know, discussing the ways of the Lord. And here's what I told her. When destiny is sure, Satan begins to wait at strategic points. All right. One of the strategic points Satan will wait is at the point of the marital decision. That's why a lot of people are married to agents of darkness. They are not married to partners. Do you understand? So he just organized that person, arranged that person, because the only thing that could save you from that is the discerning spirit. So we have a world where people go to the market with observation, not with discernment. And guess what? If you approach anybody by only what they tell you and show you, you are blind. We live in a very pretentious world. Even people who don't mean to pretend are pretending. Because everybody seated here are not in their natural element. Wait until they're alone in the room and eating. Everybody here right now is forming, not because you are a hypocrite. But there's an act we put up when another is involved. Do you get what I mean? So when we begin to deal with the strategies of the devil, we are not dealing with things that, you know, can just be understood from the human perspective. So we have a lot more to do. And see, I don't know how to actually teach without bringing in some, do you know what they call koboko? Horse whip. Some of us are going to live here wounded by the Lord. Not negative injury. He will just flog us. We'll go home. I say, I need some correction to myself. I'm coming for you guys. You know, we're just starting gently. The plane is taxiing. We'll soon take off. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lock that door. Nobody's running from this place. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So, Satan begins to wake at, with at strategic places. But you know the problem with Christians today? We are so lackadaisical. We are so, we are so relaxed when we are dealing with a full-time devil. Do you know Satan has no other job than to be Satan? Now, see, see, let me explain to you what you are dealing with. I didn't come here to scare you, and I don't talk, I see, I don't elevate Satan above God, but we must put him in perspective. Hope you know there's unemployment in the demonic realm. The unemployment is high. It's very high. You will now know why I take you seriously. Should I tell you how high it is? There's no unemployment in America. Go to the demonic realm. Why? The Bible says if a demon is cast out of a place, he goes about looking for where else to dominate. Finding none. The guy says, you know what? I left a house. The Bible, oh my God. I love the way scripture puts it. It says, my house. Ah, That means the devil is even claiming possession of the person. But that's not where I'm going to. He now goes into town and says, hey guys, I know there's unemployment here. Many of you don't even have who to possess and to upset. Seven of you come. Praise God. I see pastor. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Praise God. He said, seven of you, come. I have a house. I'm no longer selfish. Come and share with me. The Bible says you carry these seven who are more wicked than he. That means people who are more qualified than he is are out of job. Do you see why you sat down last night wondering why does he appear my life is under attack? Because you have a serious kingdom who take your destiny more serious than you are taking it. So they called you for prayer. You didn't come for prayer because you are not taking your destiny as serious as the devil is taking it. So this guy calls in seven who are more wicked than he, the Bible says, and says, you know what? I'm no longer selfish. I'm ready to share. Let us go. Then the Bible says, come in there and meet in the house clean, not filled with the kind of purpose we are talking about here, they make the condition of that person worse than at the beginning. Why? He was dealing with one. He's now dealing with eight. One plus seven. How can people who are more wicked than this one be out of job? Have you ever thought about that? So, when it comes to the issues of your destiny, so, people don't even get married these days knowing what marriage is or knowing exactly what they are doing with it. 
Why am I focused on these people more? Are these the people that are getting married next? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's so important to interrogate these things. And that's why people also don't know the meaning of compatibility these days. I say we're still taxing, we'll soon take off. People don't know. Do you know you can flow with the person you're not compatible with? You can vibe with the person you're not compatible with. And I, I explain that so that we, we lay the foundations well. For instance, on a certain day, my wife and I were taking a walk and we stumbled on these guys. It was the hair day of Cristiano Ronaldo and Mercy. By the way, Mercy is in America now, which is good for American people, all right? Because I like the guy. So there was this guy in Man United jersey. And I looked at him. And I just wanted to start a football banter. I don't know him. I don't know his name. We never talk. So I turned to him and said, Mercy is better than Ronaldo. The guy just turned. Then we had this fierce conversation like friends for like 10 to 15 minutes. My wife was just walk, watching with amazement like Jesus Christ. This is how I want you to flow with me. Do you understand? No, no, no. You don't know football. So we cannot flow in that dimension. Do you know, till today, I don't remember the name of the guy. We had this wonderful conversation. We just vibed. But when it comes to the issue of compatibility, we are dealing with our core values. We are dealing with who we are because people don't marry bodies. They marry mindsets. They marry perspectives. They marry, you know, purposes on earth. So, I mean, we finished that conversation, but that's the end of it. So we had a flow. But when it comes to the core issues of life, the woman in my house meets me where nobody or where that guy may never meet with me. Do you know why a lot of people are frustrated in marriage? Because you will be tired of the person you marry until there's something deeper. That's what the Bible says in Amos 3, 3, 2 cannot work together except they be agreed. You know what people think? People think that agreement is coming to take vow. That's the easiest thing you can do in your life. I, blah, 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 take you as my lovely wedded. Well done. When you finish, you go go house. It's when you get to the house, you just realize, <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Ah, when people call in the counseling line, oh my God, I want God to, I want God to, I want God to, because the problem on earth is that people think it's about them. When you read First Corinthians 15, oh my God, that famous good old song, all things were made for his pleasure, they are and well created. Are you among the things that were created? Yes, now. ha uh -uh. So, when we go back to the foundation and begin to interrogate the journey to marriage, you will realize that we we'll start having fewer exes. You know why? There are many journeys we have made that God did not send us. We're just cooperating with Satan to increase the number of stitches in our hearts. Mm. Oh my God. This is my local government now. So, people are stitches, real stitches. Seven hours of surgery to correct the pain. Just pretend it's not you. <laughs> Praise God. Stitches on the heart. Why? You went in a journey you were not sent. Who sent you? Why did you go? Because until we ask the why, we will struggle with the what. Why? Why are we here? Oh, I've seen relationships. Ah, plenty of them. Plenty, 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 plenty. I mean, the relationship that when you see you, at first sight, you know there's a problem. There is problem here. There is problem. Like that play we were watching, there is problem. You are desiring what you are not even positioned for. Because there's so much more to this life than that desire. So you have people craving for things they don't even understand. And my hope in life is understanding the things I crave. Because have you ever seen someone who got something that didn't even know what to do with like, I, I've been telling this story in my teachings lately. This guy had a driver but didn't know how to drive. Had the latest vehicle. I mean, but he was mean. So, on a certain day, he was on a journey with his driver and his driver got angry because the boss was mean. And the driver stopped at the bush path and said, I know, do it again. Take your key. All right? And the driver crossed the road and took a taxi. But this guy has an asset on the road. So, he cannot cross the road and take a taxi. See his car. See the key. It is his. The papers are in his name. But he can't drive does that paint a picture to you of some people who are married and don't know what to do with the marriage and that's a problem so you know the privilege that you have if you're single here is that i first of all say congratulations congratulations because you have the privilege to make right what people didn't get right all right and some of us are even dealing with it in different phases you know you are from home that you know that all is not well 
In fact, the house is disadvertising marriage. It's making marriage look like, why am I going to enter marriage in the first place? First of all, let's deal with that demon. Your parents are not the standard. They are just one bad example if you are from that kind of place. Do you get what I mean? The standard is still the word of God. It doesn't matter who fails. The word of God has never failed. So I tell people, any bad example you see is just somebody who didn't do it right. Okay? So let's go back to the standard. So the question I have for you if you are single is, when God delivers marriage into your hand, would you know what to do with it? then that will take us to the core of the conversations we'll get into. Because I touch compatibility, I touch your understanding of knowing what marriage is because we're headed somewhere because the full person needs to stand and be well equipped. If you look at scripture, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing in all you're getting, get understanding. It didn't say love is the principal thing. Love will never fail you. But when it comes to the interactions of life, for instance, nobody can tell me they understand faith when their faith is not producing money because the earth in which we live runs on money economy. <laughs> so faith is going to translate to money. Do you get what I'm saying? So if anybody wants to talk about their Christianity, I want to see how it translates to relational integrity. I want to see how it translates to managing humans because to dwell on this earth, you started by a relationship. Somebody's blood got hot and they did something. While they were doing that thing, guess what? The angel in charge of you, if you are black my, like me, went to loamy soil and picked it. Do you get? If you are a like this, my sister, it's mud. They just went, <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I just fetched some mud. Quack, 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 quack. People thought they were making love. No, relationship, bam. Boom, boom. Somebody, <laughs> somebody started. Relationship, you didn't start by yourself. You were housed by a person. Then, bam, 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 you showed up. Some of you, you stuck for three years. They were trying to win you, you refused relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? Somebody paid the fees. Somebody housed you. Somebody clothed you. Somebody held you and all of that. Are you now amazed that you are grown up and everything in you just wants relationship? Because you are a relationship being. You are produced by it, nurtured by it, groomed by it, grown by it, and you are now here craving it. But remember what I said, and that's why I'm going back there. How am I going to maximize my craving? The first thing I must know to maximize that craving, to be in a relationship or to live a life of relationship and to take it to the next level and to be fulfilled in it. No, I'll not say, I'll not say that yet. Let me still lay some foundation. A little more foundation. I'm going to end up spending more time in my life married than I spent being unmarried. And that's the case for a lot of people. You know, that's the case for a lot of people. You know those three Nigerians in my house? I'm marking time for them. They'll soon be out, and I'll be left alone with their mom again. It's a long life ahead by the grace of God of being in that relationship. So I don't want to trade the longer part of my life anyhow because of a desire. So I tell people, somebody comes to me, oh, Julie, I'm 35. I don't know what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. I say, don't waste the last 35 years of your life with a stupid decision. Somebody's 25, somebody's 20, somebody's 26, somebody's 22. I say, if you just want to live to be 70 from 25, my math is poor. How many years is that? How many is that? 45. If you, live, if you just want to live to be 70 and you are 30, that's 40 years. Like, what exactly am I going to use 40 years? And in relationship, what exactly do you want to do in like 45 years? 50 years, by God's grace, if Jesus tarries. That's a big question to ask. And that's why there are people inside my head looking at each other. I don't even know what we are doing here again. I don't know what we are doing here again. There are big questions to ask. Gary Chapman places the emotional life of every relationship at two years. That's the phase where emotion does you. It's a max two years. I agree with him. So what do I do with the rest of the time? That's what brings us to the conversation I want us to make this morning or afternoon. So here's the deal. The craving is not the problem. The plan is not the problem. The desire is not the problem. No. is that we have a devil that waits at strategic points. And the first strategic point he waits is he wants you to be more emotional than decisional. He wants you to be more emotional. That's why I said Proverbs 4, 7, than decisional. So you are going to come to that point where everything is about how I feel, how I want to feel. But when we go back to the beginning, it was not an emotional journey. 
It was a purposeful journey. How do I know it was a purposeful journey? God began by explaining what he wanted to do because God wanted to bind God to what God had decided to do. All right, so in Genesis 1:26, 27, 28, he began to cast the picture of this union. Let them have dominion this way and have dominion that way. Then he created them, male and female created he them. Then in Genesis 2 from verse 15, he begins to instruct the man because the man was going to walk according to his instruction. And people think it's outdated to talk about God instructing people when it comes to marriage. It's not. Let me say this to you quickly. Little digression, but to help you understand. Civilization itself is outdated. In fact, the most backward thing about mankind is civilization. Everything we think is an advancement is just uncovering the ancient parts of God. People paid $250,000 to get into a submersible and went to die. How many years ago did God plant Jonah in the belly of a fish, send the fish to the deep, call the fish to vomit him by shore? No casualty, no payment. Hello? Did anybody die? Nobody died. These ones were going to look for people that died hundred and something years ago. And the spirit said, come. <laughs> not the spirit and the bride the spirit there say, mm. that's how backward we are have you followed archaeologists and all the findings they are doing about ancient times in fact there's, there are questions now did these people do this thing with hand do you know how far back mankind tried to build a tower to reach God they are talking about skyscrapers. no we are talking God creepers do you understand? So man has just been trying to scratch different parts of him. Do you know how long ago Philip disappeared just to evangelize and return? On Monday now, start one long journey to Nigeria. Civilization is backward. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all this madness going on that we think, oh my God, that's the in thing. Oh, hey, hey, hey. This thing is ahead of all the civilization. I don't want to tell you the specific things going on in America that doesn't make sense to you. Does it make sense? <laughs> Does it make sense? So, go back here. Hmm? Even if you have put it here, go back to it. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So, let's go back. So, we have a lot of guys. I told you about Koboko. It's about to come out. Now, let's go to, sc- <laughs> let's go to scriptures particularly. Hey, all the guys, let's start with you. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. <laughs> let's begin. Let's begin where we'll keep the journey where God wants us to keep it. 2.15. And the Lord God commanded. Somebody say command. Who did he command? The man. Now let's distinguish this man. Go back to Genesis 1.26. I'm a teacher. So come with me. He makes it easy. 2 verse um, 26. Thank you. Not 16. Put the 2 instead of 1. Hmm? Thank you. Then the Lord God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and over the beds of the sky, over there, continue, livestock and blah, blah. 27, please. Thank you. Next verse. Now, watch what, what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God created he them. What that word? Them. Male. Ah, no, 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 brother or sister. Male and female created he them. This is Genesis 1.27 where the both came into existence but in the spirit. Now 2 verse 14. Let's take 2 from verse 14 just to have context. So that we heard where we're going to. Uh, what am I talking about? Building stable relationships. I didn't give you a title, yeah? The name of the third river, the Tigris, it runs along, blah, blah, blah. 15, yeah? Mm-hmm. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. The first thing God does to the man male is to take him. Turn to any brother near you and say, can God take you? Can God determine your location, your direction, your job, your choices? Stay with scripture. And the Lord God took the man. I took you back to Genesis 1 because I wanted to show you that he created mankind, male, female. At that point, the reference to man was mankind. But here, you know some sisters are dating men that God cannot take and that's a problem. Because anybody that God cannot take is a monster. 
I will soon explain to you this. The, the enormity of the power God places in the man makes it impossible for him to be the right man if God cannot control him. He's going to be leader of the home. You know, women should stop arguing about submission. They start knowing the kind of thing to choose. Because the reason people are fighting submission is they're not choosing people that look like Christ. Because if you are in church submitting to Christ, there's something about his leadership that makes submission sweet. So when you now submit to Christ but can't submit to a man, the question is not submission. The question is the kind of man you chose that doesn't look like Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we go back to the beginning, the first thing God does and the first thing God demonstrates is that I can take this one. I can determine his location. I can determine his direction. Mm, like they say, it's not his erection that determines his direction. It's the Lord. Let's go back to that scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody just did like this. Ah, this guy, I don't know. That's how I used to preach the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden. God, number one, took him. Then number two, God put him. That means God can move him around. All right? Because we live in the days where Christians cannot meet and talk about what the Lord has been telling them. Yeah. Because there were days that when believers met, they talked about the dealings of the Lord in their life. So, ah, let me go ahead of myself. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. If you have it in the message, oh my God, it will just, it will just kill Satan now. His burial will be tomorrow. 2 Corinthians. All right? Do you have it in the message? Uh, if you have it in the message, we'll do message, you do amplified. Let me show you why it's important. If you don't, we'll just read this. Then somebody will just open it on their phone by the grace of God. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do... This person is born again. Don't become partners. <laughs> Watch this. Don't become partners with those who reject God. You know the fool says in his heart there's no God, even if he has six pack. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, don't become partners with those who reject God. He said, how can you make partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. Is light best friends with the dark? No, you see, because we live in a woke generation that thinks through civilization and not through the civilization of God. And that's a problem. Because people want to we're not called to conform. Okay, you know, in the spirit... Oh, this person is born again. Now, in the spirit of this, go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Same message, all right? We'll do message, we'll do amplify it if possible. Romans chapter 12. Mm. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it, go ahead, mm-hmm, before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Next verse. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, next verse. <laughs> Not verse one. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it even without thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to his level of immaturity. Move it. I believe that's what is there. Always dragging you down to his level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well for maturity in you. I'm reading Bible. I'm not giving you opinion. I'm reading Bible. So you must be careful what the culture is dragging you to. So let's go back to Genesis 1 now. You can stay with the NIV there. Okay, no, switch to the NLT because there's something I'll look for along the line. So we're back in Genesis chapter 2 in the beginning, uh, verse 15. You can switch to the NLT. Are you following what I'm saying? Is it takeable? So somebody sees somebody in church and brings them, man of God, I found love. Well done, Sacha. All right? Ah, you won't understand. I have always no understanding. When people sit before you and the thing is doing them, oh my God. Ah, you understand, sir. Look at the foundational issues. No. You just saw him in church. You know, and especially in this generation, do you realize we have more passionate women in church than men? And men are just acting like the elder brothers of God? They just come to church and say, you know. As I say, lift up your holy hands, let's worship God. Pharisees and Sadducees. What you choose, the person you choose is the experience you have selected. That's the truth. Do you understand? Uh -huh. Let's go back to scripture. So, this is the pathway to relationship that makes sense in the Lord. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to walk it and to take care of it. 
We have always interpreted this scripture to just mean work. This is not about making dollars. There are people who are making dollars but can't make a home. This is about knowing a purpose in God. If, see, if there's nothing in your life that points you at the direction of what God wants you to be passionate about, you're already in trouble. Because what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? I still practice law. But let me say the truth to you. The biggest thing in my life and destiny is what I'm doing right now. Mm. Man may not see security in it. Where's the security in it? Hey, hey, hey. You know these cares and worries of life. <laughs> Am I saying I'm broke? I'm not. I work diligently. Even as I've been in the US, I've been working. In fact, I spend almost all my time here living through Nigerian time, which in Houston is six hours ahead. Here is five hours ahead. Yeah. So I was waking up to give instruction to my team and several times. If I was living in the circle of Nigeria while living here bodily, do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody's saying you shouldn't have something to do with life, but here's the deal. If you hook up with someone who has nothing in God driving them, you're already hooking up with disaster. Because this life is too shallow to do without something bigger. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, that's why when you look through scripture, when he begins to speak in 1 Peter chapter 3, he says the woman's adornment should not just be of braiding of the hair and the things she wears, but it's of that gentle and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, priceless. Because God is looking down and not seeing exactly what the man is seeing. So the guy is bringing a lady with all the curves and God is wondering where's the value. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So God is just wondering, how did you pick that woman? Like, are you sick or something? Body that will soon change. Have you not seen women that marry men with six pack? Now they're living with amusement park. <laughs> yes. It was like this. It's not like this. Do you understand? We are changing. My wife gained like 20 kg after three children. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know kilograms? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? And we had to enter work. But here's the deal. I married a beautiful woman, man. I still like her, I'm telling you. But here's the deal. Status is changing. <laughs> Something is. Then we change. Have you seen people that marry like this, but not like this? Glory to God. My God. Both male and female. <laughs> um, let's stay with scripture. Let's stay with scripture. You, 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 you must go to scripture. The kind of things I used to say, I used to stay with scripture so that people will not stone me. Anybody planning to stone me, the Lord will arrest your hands. <laughs> Just receive the word of God with meekness. <laughs> Next verse. Verse 16. Watch this. So you want a woke man that cannot be woken up. <laughs> sleeping, sleeping in the realm of the spirit but wearing jeans and doing low waist so you think he's going somewhere to happen not go anywhere you know the worst thing this generation does is follow somebody wearing designer designer that has died since <laughs> still defining their identity <laughs> because he's wearing Gucci what's Gucci? Gucci has not made any marriage work it's just something your flesh craves you get, yeah you understand what I said. said and the Lord God commanded the man the next thing he did was to command him what can you see in his life that he is doing because God spoke? Not because he's natural. Where does he stand out because this one is God that told him? Everything goes. Anything goes. He's like every other person. That's not a man. That's a boy. That's a boy. That's why boys are getting married and coming for counseling. We are tired of counseling. We don't want counseling job. If people have sense, our job will reduce. <laughs> ah, these people are not ready for me. They are just wondering. Where did pastor go and dig this black man? <laughs> he just came here to look for trouble. <laughs> Boys! They cannot be commanded. So you know what I tell ladies? One of the questions you ask a man when a man is interested in you and you are having conversations, what's your command? On what order are you running? What is the command? Which direction? That's why when Jesus came, you noticed that his life ran on a command. The guy was not here, uh, anything goes. That's the one that I used to pay myself. What's the nature of a relationship? We see where it goes. Have you ever gone to the airport and say, oh, I'm looking for the plane that goes where it goes? They say, where are you going to? No, I, I guess, okay, maybe I, let me just enter New York. <laughs> see where it goes? When a commanded man stands in front of you, he casts a picture. He gives a direction. I asked my wife out as a second year student in the university. She's in my house right now. Because I went with a picture. He's not, eh, 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 eh. he was not hormonal, he was decisional. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's, there was a command. Ah, you know all the attacks that came at us. You know, so a student relationship never lasts. He lasted, though. It is still lasting. I'm telling you, he's not going to die anything. Do you get what I mean? Why am I saying that? Because a lot of things that we think are natural are not. They are decisional. We are creating them. So the Lord God commanded the man. Now, look, look, look there again. Let's, let's look at scripture. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any three in the garden. Go ahead. But, do you know when you meet a true child of God who will live a stable life, they will know their boundaries. You will see clear boundaries. You know, you know what Christians are doing today? They are arguing with the boundaries of the word of God. Uh, I, 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 they say you should not kiss in a relationship. Uh, does any, uh, nobody gets hurt. Let me quickly digress and say something. The law of God does not make sense to natural man. Nobody's going to get hurt with fornication, especially in this age. If I have been teaching that it's not about getting pregnant and it's not about STDs, all of those can be handled. Do you know? Well handled. No problem, self. But there is this song, eh? Let me start from that song. That we sing those days when we were younger in church. Young children. We did boys' brigade and all of this. Stuff. You cannot hide it from God. You may hide it from man and nobody may know. You can. Let's start from there. Because when you lock door, by you don't lock heaven. <laughs> Do you understand? There may be no CCTV, but there's am i speaking condemnation no i'm just we're just discussing are we not just discussing we're just discussing we're just dis- we're just gisting i'm not even shouting am i shouting i'm not shouting we're just gisting are we not gisting you're listening i'm talking we're gisting well here's the deal the first thing about god is that god deals on the realm of the law of honor that i did it just because he said it Finish. For instance, Adam and Eve, I hope you know they didn't fall down dead, but they died. <laughs> it's not about the consequence I can see. So, first of all, it's law of honor. Number two, every time we cross the lines that God say we should not, and we feel we got away with it, what we have done is to establish a new order. And this is the order that single people establish to themselves. Because some people, some people are so funny. They come to you, you know, they, they ask it. After all, we are getting married. So, so, so. Mm-mm. What happens is that every time we breach the law of honor, we set a new code. And let me give you that code. Anybody you sin with will sin against you. Straight and boldly too. Because <laughs> they preach fornication. We no agree. We fornicated. So you and I agreed by action. That honoring God is out of the equation of our relationship. By your action. So don't tell me that as I'm in America now, I travel for two weeks, for three weeks, or I go on a course and you are not there. You think that our whole body... No, you and I agreed by practice that holding ourselves is an impossible, impossibility, impossible... Give me another bad English. Everything impossible, Sha, is in this code. We have encoded into this union that... Forget it. I don't have capacity, you don't have capacity. So we are committing now. Don't think I will not commit just because you want to be happy. So you see, people, after they have done all those things, they're coming to my man of God, you won't believe it. Oh my God, I'm so heartbroken. Why are you heartbroken? There's a code. There's a code. We couldn't wait when we we're dating. Why are you expecting me to wait? Now I went on course three weeks. You want to kill me? When I wanted to die, were you not the one that fed me? You want <laughs> it's a code. So when the Lord God commanded him and gave him boundary, he wa- boundaries are never funny. But guess what? Boundaries are stronger than your strength. That's why God gives boundaries. That's why I say flee. He didn't say, you know, that, forget that title of that movie, Fighting Temptation. There are temptations they are not supposed to fight. They are supposed to run. Even if I say, oh, look at you, you are too weak, you are running. He said, don't worry, I'm coming. <laughs> Just be running. Run. Run. Run away from it. Why? He gave him boundaries. No, no. My relationship, we just want to see a movie on next week. Well done. Well done. Netflix. Netflix. That's how people enter trouble. They want to see a movie. It's not just movie. It's film. <laughs> you want to watch film. See, boundary. 
So there are things you would do because you want to establish a code that lines up with the order of God. You want to say, you know, you know, and this is what I tell people. Even for people who have, for instance, crossed the sexual line, <laughs> one of the easiest ways to establish the code of honor is to identify and acknowledge, yes, I've been there, but I'm out of there. And you are going to see in practice. So you are not meeting me a virgin doesn't mean you are going to have a disvirgin relationship. We're actually going to have a virgin relationship. So yeah, I was there because the proof of my repentance is my capacity to live a new life. That's why Jesus looked at that woman. He didn't condemn her. So if you have not committed, I throw the first stone. The moment he discarded all of them, he turned to the woman. The woman expected lecture. The only thing he said, go and see no more. So even if you have been there, and you are wondering, this guy just came to condemn me. He said, lie, I didn't. You enter a relationship, Oga, madam, I did here before. I was there. But let me tell you the truth. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message is that going forward. <laughs> In fact, if I have history to give you, since I came to know the Lord or since I repented of my sin, I have been this way. And I'm going to keep it this way. You know what you have just done? You have just firmly established the law of honor. Praise God. Next. Let's go to scripture. Yay. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will sh certainly die. Next verse. But here's the deal as we go to the next verse. God's instructions to us are for our good. So when I meet a person and we are big on God's order is because we know the best for us. Why? You didn't begin with your parents. He said to Jeremiah, before I formed your mother's womb, I knew thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. That's where we're going to. Next verse. <clears throat> then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. This is where I've been traveling to all along, actually. Who said? Was it the guy that said, I, I think I'm done with school, so... Who said? God. Was it the lady that said, I bet God I'm under pressure. Who said? God. The conversation began with God. You know, I tell people, God is more interested in you getting married than you are to get married. The only problem is that God is seeking those who are ready to fulfill his purpose. Now watch this. Then the, the Lord God said, Adam, Adam was just about the business God had given. Adam was not even bothered. It was God that interrupted his busy. I said, okay, uh, you know, there's a plan. <laughs> Thank you for the focus. Thank you for the instruction you have taken. But here's the deal. It is not good. Can we turn this to message translation? Then we'll go back to NLT soon. But watch this. God said it is not good. Ah, go back. Amplify it. Sorry. Amplify it. Good, beneficial. There's a word there I'm looking for. Thank you. Now, the Lord God said it is not good, beneficial, for the man to be alone. The question I have is, my dear sister, what benefit would you be to a marriage? Because we have a generation that just wants a man, but have nothing to offer. See, you are supposed to be a help. You are the needed, not the needy. So you are not in a cage waiting to be released by somebody who will take you out of bondage. Mm -mm. He said it is not good, in essence, beneficial for the man to be alone. There's a benefit she's bringing. Do you get what I mean? And can I stroke a little more? Because you have broke girls looking for rich people. If you think people should have money, where's your own? In fact, the one that used to pay me, your own father is still broke at 65. But this 25-year-old man that is trying to start his life, you think he should have what your father? <laughs> it is well. <laughs> is anybody planning to stone me? Please have mercy. It's the word of God. It's not my fault. I just read the Bible. <laughs> Somebody be watching. I carried my son to the afternoon. For somebody to be insulting me. It's the word of God. Blame the Bible. Amplify translation. <laughs> so my sister, ask yourself, what value am I bringing to a man? What, what, what use am I? What scripture? The scripture. Because nothing kills a man like a bad woman. And nothing helps a man like a good woman. Very simple. If you want to see a man live in hell, give him a bad wife. The Bible says it is better to live in the corner of a roof. <laughs> What an apartment like a bird. That will live with a nagging woman. Do you know what I'm saying? A contentious woman. And this generation. Ha, time will fail me to go into that one. No generation has corrupted the image of a woman like this one. No generation. You just have 
Men with bra walking around and thinking they are women. Ready to match a man. Energy for energy. Power for power. Mm. Try me, I'll show you I'm in America. Hold on. There are plenty for house. I've been shouting this thing. Don't lose your beauty. You're a woman. Don't, you're a woman. Just enjoy it. Um, let's go back to scripture. <laughs> let's go back to scripture. <laughs> hey, now the Lord God said, it is not good, beneficial for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary, complementary, not competing, not attacking, not fighting, complementary. In essence, let me say the truth to you. Nobody is better than me. I'm better than no one. I am me. All right? So when I come into your life, it's not because I want to exert a certain authority. It's not because I want to put you down. I am just being me when you are you. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Do you know the problem in the world today? You have plugs fighting and competing with sockets. But plugs are supposed to go into sockets. None of them is useless. They are complementary. So people come into people's life trying to make them what they think they should be rather than understand what role did I come to play in this life. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important to look at that. Look at that scripture. Now watch and see the next thing that happens. Because Adam is about to go into a special exam. Verse 19. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal. What kind of wickedness is this? You just told me I need a wife. The next thing I see is animal. You are not the first person that will be receiving a nudge in your heart like it's marriage time. Then the next person you saw <laughs> is high on substance. <laughs> and saying, babe, babe, what? Animal, animal. But you know the problem? People are dating people they should name. So rather than see animal and call it goat, he started dating goat. Because Yesterday you came to church and they gave you a word. Your time has come. So you went out. My time has come. So the next monkey you saw, it started dating monkey. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal of the field and every bed. Go to NLT, New Living Translation. <laughs> let's, let's, let's help ourselves here. The word of God is very complete. How can you receive a word then the next day I'm meeting nonsense? That's what happened to Adam. And I'll soon show NLT if you have. If you don't have, we'll stay with NIV. So the Lord God... Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man. Now watch this, yeah? To see what he would call them. You see why I say people are dating what they should name? And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Next verse. Watch this. So the man gave name to all livestock and birds of the sky and all the wild animals. Some people are dating wild animals. Do you get it? It's not just normal animal, wild one. You come to church speaking tongue, they're going to be dating my white animal. But <laughs> for Adam, no suitable helper. Now, excuse me, do you realize it was a test? He was naming them, and God said, That picture I gave you, look at these animals. Do you find her? But do you know the problem today? People have this knack for being in a relationship that they have lost the capacity to stay single. So, do you know how many species of animals there are? How can you go through all that number and still can't find her and be comfortable? So the test God put Adam through is, how do you react when nobody's in view? Yeah, no, all your mates are dating. You are single. All your neighbors dating. You are, Valentine is coming. 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 You are single. Valentine is coming. Still single. Valentine is coming. No flower. Valentine is coming. Valentine is coming. No message. No flower. Valentine is coming. Valentine is coming. Valentine is coming. Valentine is coming. Valentine is threatening your destiny. Valentine. One day. <laughs> One day is threatening your destiny. God forbid. God forbid. 
Adam finished. Imagine that kind of job. God just said you needed help. Then you finish this kind of job. Your waist is breaking. Your body is tired. You came home. Nobody to give you dinner. Nobody to give you coffee. Nobody to say, you know, sometimes we make it look like having somebody to encourage us is the only thing we came to this world to do. Nobody to encourage you. Nobody to send you flowers. No, flowers said that they'll give you next week to die. You know, you, I don't understand. You get what I'm saying? I complain, 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 complain. Adam was still alone. Then verse 20 just gave us the secret that when he was done with that, he was not just naming, he was seeking. But he was seeking with a picture. So you know the problem with a lot of Christian singles today, they are seeking without a picture. So anything goes. Mm. So the next thing that comes with them, looking good, goes. But there's a picture. If you don't fit into... See, let me tell you, there's, there's what we call purposeful singlehood. That I am single, not because there are no options, but because the options that came they do not fit a picture. So I'm holding a picture. Have you seen those people that come to receive people at airports? You don't know the person, but you are sent to pick the person. You hold a placard with their name. You are not picking everybody. So a thousand persons can come through you. Because sometimes we are so disturbed by the number of people we have said no to. Leave the number I've said no to. The thing is, am I carrying a picture that I know where I'm going to? Do you get what I'm saying? Because people are just picking anything, not the picture. When you pick the picture, you were briefed before you pick the picture. So you stand with the placard. If you are waiting for John Paul, until somebody identifies themselves as John Paul, you will remain there. That's what a waiter does. A waiter waits with a particular reference. That's what Adam was doing. Adam said, you know what? Goat, shh, monkey, shh, lion, shh, elephant. Shh. You don't feel that there's a picture he gave me. There's somebody. The person is definite. And let me say this to you. Nobody on earth actually truly searches for a spouse. People discover God-ordained arrangements. So when people are losing sleep, like they can create anything, when even one cubit you have not been able to stretch the hair on your own head, you know how many strands of hair fell off today when you're brushing your hair? You can't even control that reality. You want to control how a complete human being will live where they are and come into your life. No, you're not that powerful. <laughs> you're not that powerful. If, don't forget, you know, don't forget, in Genesis 1, male and female created hidden. Do you remember? Verse 27. Hope you know at this point, Eve was not missing. And Eve was not to be created. Eve was only to be manifested. That means Eve existed. Because somebody seated here, the person may be in Canada, and you still come to Maryland. Do you understand? Not that the person is now, the person is alive. The person is there. Uh -huh, it's not that the person has not. <laughs> As some of you, maybe you need to go and pray. That somebody that's once come to your life will not be dating one year person. <laughs> Wasting time somewhere. Imagine Adam has started a relationship with an elephant. <laughs> Say, God, just allow me now. I can't find a woman. So learn to be comfortable when they, there's no option. You know, I, I'm, I'm always amazed when people come to counseling, especially ladies. See, I, I face this too often. It's like they just copy and paste. A lady who just come, she just describe two guys, both of them bad enough to be rejected. They, <laughs> they will be sounding like I should counsel them to choose one. And this is the question I always ask. Like, must it be one of these two? Of the billions of people all over the world, is it these two? I see, everybody don't die. Ha! So come to the point where if none is the option, be fine. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's read scripture. Somebody not say this guy just came to America to come and look for trouble. I did come to look for trouble. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the beds of the sky. This even some people that read the uh, animal science said they still can't remember all the names. You see, Adam named all of them. That's how busy he was. And all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Ha ha! Now next verse. <laughs> So the Lord God cursed. Ah, ah, God again. The person who said it's not good for you to be alone, I gave a picture, God. When God saw that, yeah, this guy is unperturbed, he's not concerned, he's not afraid, he's not saying, God, my time is going. There's no time going anywhere, I'm here. Watch this. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while the man was sleeping. Now watch this. Please, let's do simple English. Who caused the sleep? Who did the sleeping? No, no it, it, you just read it. I'm not, I'm not that kind of teacher that I come and be forcing words on you. Read English. Who caused the sleep? Who did the sleeping? Who caused the sleep? Who did the sleeping? 
How many of you have ever been in a position where you are, maybe you are watching a movie, you are sleepy, but you refuse to sleep, you even soak your leg in water just because you want to remain? The sleep came, but you rejected it. You know what Adam did here? This is one of the biggest statements of faith of Adam. God brought the sleep. Adam accepted and slept. You have resisted sleep before. You know what I'm talking about. Because of movie, series. You canceled an entire season through one night. Okay, for one night. One hour I went to prayer. You don't already those. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You, he caused the sleep. Adam collected the sleep and slept it. Do you know what this sleep refers to? It's referring to the peace of God. And that's why a lot of time before God gives you the manifested answer, he gives you peace. Because if he gives you the answer in your chaotic state, you destroy the answer. So he wants to first of all put you in the state of peace. That's why Philippians chapter 4 tells you that God will give you peace that is more than understanding. In essence, it will not make sense to another person why you are so calm about a situation that everybody is agitated. All right? So people are looking at you, talking about age, talking about this, talking about that. And you're just wondering, what are you guys talking about? Because I know in whom I have believed. So I'm standing in confidence. So Adam said, you know what? Oh, sleep came. Mm. I grabbed the bed. So I have people like us who struggle to ever have siesta. Hardest thing in this world for me. Oh my God, my son, our first child. Hey, God, I wish you would just baptize me with that spirit. The moment they just come back from school, with the school uniform, he's headed to bed. He will do it for like one or two hours. Then wake up to come and have dinner and read for the evening. Standard routine. I used to look at who born you? <laughs> I mean, born you. Where can you do this one from? I mean, as, as he's dropping his bag straight, see Esther. Adam accepted his sleep. All right? Nothing troubles his sleep, David. So when he slept and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's rib, then closed up the place. See, God wants to orchestrate our marriages. He doesn't want us to get us together by ourselves. Sisters in the house, praise the Lord. So the blouses don't have to go lower and the skirts don't have to go higher. You don't have to procure a man for yourself. You know? See, I'm telling you, I've changed makeup. You see, you make up your life. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nobody should stop me now, but here's the deal. You know, I tell people, eh? we live in a generation that sometimes makeup is actually a proof of your low self-esteem. Because until you apply it, you are not confident. <laughs> you made in image and likeness of God. Let me tell you the truth. When you marry, when you get home, you wash it. <laughs> then the man will meet the reality in marriage. <laughs> you see all the weeks we used to wear, we take it off. My God, natural hair. <laughs> Do you know? I delivered my wife from wearing Gidu. Should I tell you the secret? We say it in public, so don't be here pitying her. This woman just married disaster. I'm not disaster. I'm telling you the truth. So one day now, I mean, then she was, of course, recovering from all the childbirth and all. We're doing a lot. Exercise today, exercise tomorrow. So she came home and she was taking off the Gidu. I'm like, wait, madam, wait. Let's face reality. So you tied up for others to see. And the real owner is dealing with the... <laughs> So you just came home and braga, you are giving me the reality of your body. But when you go out, they think you are paying no waste three man. Huh? Leave it. Auntie, can we face our reality? Let's start working. Work out, work out. Portion control, how you eat, how you don't eat. This is how many years. She, that was her deliverance. She just said, not true. <laughs> she just dropped it. And we began to deal with it for what it is. Because you know, men are buying chests now, but. This one is real, though. It's not. <laughs> I'm not wearing anything, no. Men are buying chests. Oh, you don't know? Chests are six pack. They wear zip hip. <laughs> people are mar people are marrying mannequin, not people. <laughs> or like somebody calls it, people are marrying mannequin. <laughs> See, the world will continue to be funny. I'm telling you. Watch this. <laughs> In fact, you know AI pictures are everywhere now. People don't even like how they look, so they must use their eyes. <laughs> oh, God, God. Uh, scripture, please. So that, because somebody's very stone, let me, <laughs> let me make them miss road and hit scripture, not me. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Watch this. Orchestrations of God. There are movements that God will make. I was on the I was on the mini campus. My wife was on the main campus. My wife didn't study for the arts, but she ended up studying business administration. 
She went there frustrated her in admission because God was arranging her back to me, simple and short. Anybody that explained it, she wanted medicine, they gave her pharmacy, then whatever, whatever happened, blah, blah, blah. So they gave her an option to just choose a course. So in her mind, according to her story, she just wanted to pick a course that her parents would tell her, come back home. So she, she filled the form, business administration, because the main aim was to rewrite against the next year. Since I didn't meet a cut-off mark and they're giving me so, so, and so. That's how she just filled. Uh, say what she's doing now. So, so she heard somebody say business administration. She just wrote business administration. Guess what? She called home. The parents said she should do <laughs> She should do it with the view to writing the next year. She met me in that first year. Story has changed. She's in my house. Do you understand what I'm saying? So she left Samaru, one-hour bus drive to Congo campus, the mini campus where law was. Simple and short. You apply for medicine, you ended up pharmacy, you ended up filling a form. God delivered it to husband. End of story. Do you, see, they are, don't worry yourself. There are things you are losing sleep, losing sleep, losing sleep. And you know, oh my God, so, aye, some people are just, some people, some people, they are just 22 days. It looks like the whole world has left them. Left it away. Even $700, I don't have to your name. I think the world has left <laughs> Make money first. Hello? I know the person I'm talking to now is now pretending it's not how I'm talking to. But the person knows. <laughs> the stone is coming. The stone is coming. But you get what I'm saying? There's more to life than worry, 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 worry. Take no thought what you would eat or what you would drink because your heavenly father knows. And guess what? He says he feeds the birds of the air. But he didn't call him their father. And your father is not that kind of wicked type that feeds outsiders and starves the people at home. So he says he's feeding the birds of the air, but he's your father. Let's stay back with scripture. Yeah. Let's stay back with scripture. And what scripture? Please carry us out of um, verse 21. We can go to 22 now. Thank you. Then the Lord God made a woman. Now this making is physical manifestation. The Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of man and he brought her to the man. Now watch this. Let's do this. Please come. <clears throat> You're acting drama. They say you collected somebody's. Never mind that lady in that drama. You did not collect anybody's any of this. She did not position herself well. Watch this. Let's do this drama. Then the Lord God made a woman. Watch this. Who made the woman? Boyfriend? Fiancé? Partner? At this point, has she seen Adam? God made a woman from the rib you are taking from the man. And he brought her. Who brought her? Come and play Adam like you were doing that in that uh, <laughs> in that uh, drama. Adam, just go here. Eh? Clap for Adam. Clap for Adam. <laughs> Who held her hand? Who? Scripture, scripture. Who held her hand? And the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her. Who did she see first? Who is she seeing right now? Is he Adam? Boyfriend? Classmate? The guy in the choir with me in church? This is the problem that happens to people. People see men when they have not seen the God that should take them to the men. So God is not playing his part in the equation. And he brought her to him. Who brought her to him? Do you see how much of God is in this matter? Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you know this is not a curve matter right now, right? Or like, is he blonde, white hair now? It's not a white hair matter. You, you, you know, right? Oh, Oibo, Oibo. You like Oibo people? Do you have a girlfriend? Fiancé? Or you're eyeing somebody? Not really, but somebody's trying to get your attention. Why? You say you're kind of what? You're kind of broke. <laughs> so with economic empowerment, your eye will open. <laughs> So, so, <laughs> so your limitation now is you want to, first of all, with money, my God, it's you God sent me to. It's not about money. I was broker than you when I asked my wife out. It's about purpose. Uh, but the place for money, they will, I'll explain. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> nobody can survive hunger in this world. <laughs> uh <-huh. Oibo. laughs> 
<laughs> you even know what the Igbo is now. Eh? Uh-huh. Well done, Igbo. You realize this conversation has been God, 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 divine direction, divine orchestration, the movements of the Lord. I mean, it is what it is. So, please come this way. Now, watch this. What, what, what was happening? Please, scripture again. The Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. Now watch the next verse. The man said. At this point, God stepped aside. Stand. Mm-hmm. No, face each other. Face him. Face him. Face him. The man said. Do you realize at this point, God stopped talking? And this is where the modern problem begins. She begins to talk. I mind this guy. He's not responding. Man of God, what do I do? Do nothing. Do nothing. No, oh, do nothing. If I yesterday answered one more again, eh, the guy I like in church, eh, 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 she described everything. I say, I say, I say, Madam, pull back. Pull back. That's where abuse begins. That's where she finish starts. Please step back. Allow him to see you. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, ooh. I say, Madam. <laughs> because you are not the only one seeing the brother. Many of you are catching vision. Do you know how many people have come to me for counsel, especially popular single men of God? God told me I'm his future wife. And I tell them direct, it's not true. <laughs> Leave him alone. For one particular, I say, I know the person is dating. Leave him. If they think just sweetie, you anointing, anointing. You are just anointing. You are seeing yourself, mama. Mama, first lady. Hmm. Hmm. So, <laughs> somebody say, what kind of rule is this? <laughs> Person just gone to church. They don't turn out to Ibo for drama. <laughs> so, Ibo, <well> <laughs> so, Here's the deal. Watch this. At this point, God steps and becomes an observer. Watch, watch scripture. Next verse, that's that verse 23. The man said, this is now bone of my bone. The first thing that fell off, his, fell off his lips is an identification of oneness, not an attempt to suggest I'm superior, look at you, who are you? Because the first thing he must communicate is the value that you bring and who you are. Do you get what I mean? So until there's that communication of value, he said, you are now bone of my bone, flesh from my flesh, she shall be called woman. The next thing he did was to identify her with a definite identity, give her an identity. This is who she is. If he cannot call out the nature of God in you, then he's not qualified to lead. So what's do you now see where 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 comes in? What fellowship has light and darkness. This is the original home fellowship. That's why if we come together as God intends for us to come together, she will not be running from pillar to post, praying for a husband to have sense, or he run from pillar to post, praying for a wife to have sense. It will be Matthew 18, 19. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything, on earth, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So at that point, you are talking about communication that is beyond I love you, I like the way you look, oh my God, when I think of you, I can't sleep, you soon sleep, I'm telling you, next to you, they'll be lying down, you'll be sleeping. Do yeah. you get what I mean? Let's go back to scripture. I didn't come to Maryland to join people, but you get, so this is now, is she your sister? Okay. Do you like her? I don't really, I've just... You have never really thought about her? She's a fine girl. So this is, this is now... Please, any other brother that is interested, don't be angry. I'm just doing drama, Shah, but is she not fine? Are you blind? You can see now. Remove your glasses and look at her very well. <laughs> no, I, I'm just acting drama. Well done. Is somebody in your life? Are you not single? Are you not open to relationships? What are you talking about? Huh? Hold the hand very well. See, I'm holding the tip of the hand. Uh, hold the hand. Show that you can hold the hand. Money is coming. Don't worry. <laughs> is money not coming? You even have beard gang. 
This so one don't enter trouble for my hand today. <laughs> this, you see, even the video people refuse to put us on video. They are afraid. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go back to the scripture. <laughs> I need to wrap up. I have questions to answer. This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. If you go to um, Ephesians chapter 5, it tells us a mystery. And that's what the man should be doing. What is he calling you? He's disturbing you, sending WhatsApp message. What, what's the content of his talk? What identity is he creating? When he speaks, what wakes up in you? Just lost, lost, lost. Oh my God, when I see you, I can't, I can't sleep. And so what, sir? I didn't come to keep you awake. I came for us to go somewhere. Where are we going to? Hold the hand very well. Do you understand? <laughs> so it's not, uh, it's what are you saying? That is a, do you understand? So we need to go and load you what you will say. Do you understand? And what you say is in the word of God. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me give him an example. Ephesians 5.22. I'm going to give you an example. You are in trouble. Me and you, you will say something. If, if it's not Igbo, you must still talk, Sha. Do you understand? See the way I'm smiling. If you have a very fine smile, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> Oibo, you didn't bargain for this. My God. You're acting drama. I didn't know drama would happen today. Today is your day. My God. Oibo with white hair. You are talking. Eh? Coily white hair. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. You might come near black like me. Let's look at scripture. <laughs> 23, 23. Okay, watch. <laughs> Go to the message. Let's, let's talk to Adam. <laughs> the husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church. How does Christ provide leadership to his church? He speaks. He wrote us a love letter, big one. He did not leave us comfortless. In essence, he brings comfort. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. Look at scripture. Next verse. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Next verse. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives. Exactly as Christ did for the church. That means I die you day. So a love marked by giving. Not, not die you day. I'm telling you. A love marked by giving, not getting. Next verse. Mm. Christ's love makes the church whole. His love, his words evoke her beauty. There's no abuse here. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Where, you see, where people they, 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 they just attack Christianity, submission, submission, these people, they want to kill women. I don't know where it comes from. Because our wives should be excited that it is us they're married. Do you get what I mean? So, bros, there's no room for self. As you're holding this, it's not for free. There's no room for self. It's dying now with day like this. You must die to self. Because the oath of marriage for a man is the oath of death. Naberia. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can live with Ibo now. The rest is up to you. I've tried for you. <laughs> Have I not tried for him? Eh? <laughs> I'll try for him now. Praise God. Hope you have video evidence. You have video evidence. You are, you are born again. You are, save it, save it, save it. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, for us to have meaningful relationships... It must be dipped in purpose. All right? We just took off, but I want to switch to the questions that have been sent because they will help us go far. All right? I'm a teacher, so I can actually spend forever teaching. Mm -hmm. But we have gone as far as we should go. I've even made somebody see somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, please note those principles of Scripture um, um, in, in this conversation. Praise God. So uh, let me get to this. It will help us do a few more things. Um, are we good? You're sure we are good? Okay. What habits do you cultivate as a professional to ensure that you stay spiritually, emotionally, and physically healthy? Beautiful. The secret of champions 
routine. Routine is the secret of champions. Um, people say a lot, um, because of the things we do, I'm professionally busy. I mean, I remember sometime in March, I just got back to Nigeria for my South Africa mission, and man, it was tough. Like, it was tough. I just got back, and for six days and six nights, I barely saw my house. There was a major job waiting. And of course, when I talk about job, let me also tell you, a job comes with money. Do you get what I mean? And it takes money to do what we do and to run the family we run and to do all we do. So I was not going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. that's laziness. The Bible says that does not work, should not eat. Uh-huh. All right, so they are competing needs. I run a law firm, a thriving firm. All right? I mean, even to last night, I was leaving instruction, following up instruction, blah, blah, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Ministry um, next month, this August, next month, we're in UK again for another 10 days doing three cities, uh, Essex, um, Manchester, come back to London, finish up in London, get out of there. We've been in Ghana, South Africa this year. We've had monthly meetings in Abuja this year. In fact, I land on Tuesday. Our next meeting is Friday. So, I mean, it's back to back to back to back to back. Um, I mean, the number of meetings, oh, Jesus Christ, the Lord is good. But here's the deal, routine, simple routine. You know, your life is not so busy that you can't structure it. So the first thing you need to see is what is fixed about my life. When you get the fixed one, it has already taken its place in the schedule. Is what time else do I have? Then how do I schedule every other thing into the remaining time, including rest? Absolutely, including rest. And that's why I'll give you an example. Um, one of the reasons I'm on this trip alone is that we actually structure the family to work so that we don't teach things to people that we're not learning, that we're not practicing. We need to also keep... The children are not yet out, so we cannot be out, out, out. So the, the, the factor in our plan, you know, and for family bonding, for instance, yeah, we don't eat out like you guys do. We eat at home, all right? We have what we call Sunday outings, and it's enforceable by the children. So as we're leaving church on Sunday, children are demanding. Even when I'm away like this, I send the money for Sunday outing. It's our family time together. All right? My wife is entitled to at least one overseas vacation every year. All right? It's an entitlement. I promise it. I keep my word. Do you get what I mean? Ministry has even saved me that stress. Because now, the journeys are so many, so we just, we just mix it. So when I lifted that in Ghana, I was spinning her, I put out video. People say, if you go for ministry or vacation, I say both. <laughs> we preach the word and we enjoy ourselves. It's standard protocol. Do you get what I mean? So you must intentionally structure a life to deliver results on all the points. So father, lawyer, minister, husband, all of them require that I give my best to them. Do you get what I mean? So um, to create the balance, and the same thing with spiritual, our spiritual life. In fact, it's the center of our life, actually, because... I've got to know the specific time I read this thing. Because a lot of time, the reason why we don't do certain things is that we leave them to chance. We leave them to when, whenever. Anything you leave to whenever, that's how you will not do it. So, schedule yourself. The Bible says that Jesus went out a great while before the morning to pray. That means he had a routine. He had something that nothing breaks. I know the problem of this generation that we actually wake up to our phone. You get what I mean? So you need to make a decision to put your phone away, for example. And when you wake up, I know people who in the past, for, for instance, um, did no Bible, no breakfast. Standard protocol. So I must do that. So, you know, somebody reached out to me recently and I told them, um, for the most part of my life, the way I keep myself disciplined to study the word is I actually set targets. Straight targets. Okay, if for the first six months of the year I want to run through the New Testament, then you know. Okay, and it's not just run through the New Testament because what will happen is that you spend 15 days in January saying you make up in February. Mm -mm. It is minimum two chapters a day. If you go further, better. Or if you go, do you get what I mean? Um, <clears throat> my wife used September to March of the year before last into last year to get the children to run through the New Testament. Um, they're in the Old Testament now. Um, I think the last I checked with them, they should have gone past Esther or something. So they're doing five chapters a day. You know, the oldest is um, 11, 12 in September. The youngest is eight. So when I meet adults, I just wonder, like, <laughs> is Bible reading you're fighting like this? Okay? There's a period she structured Arela. Arela reads more than the, the rest of them. And in three months, she read almost 40 books. Yeah. So with her academic life ongoing, 
So it's, it's about structuring. So you sit. Uh, our son is registered for a boys' boot camp in August, for instance. When she picked the materials last week, the evening she brought the materials home, I mean, I pay that kind of money for the boot camp. You want to play with them? You, you know not waste my money. So the materials are also bulky. That night before I went to bed, he finished one of the books, which was 84 pages, structure. So there are times that TV goes off in our house for two straight months. Yeah, it can be that boring, yeah? Absolutely. Two straight or three. And we got to focus because the world offers us all the distraction. So you know what? To structure your life, you have to also call out what a distraction is. You see your phone, but check how many hours you have spent on social media in the last one week. You'll be amazed. Doing what? Giving money to other people. <laughs> Making them rich. You think everything you click is free? No, you're clicking money into people's accounts. <laughs> you're going, queen, 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 queen. And let me ask you, anything you cannot see the profit you are making out of, how is this profiting me or the kingdom? It's a waste of time. If you cannot find the profit. You know, I tell people, see, when people take social media break, I cannot. Because part of the reason I'm standing here is that I will not take social media break. Me, I know what I'm doing social media. You know, anybody that follows us knows that back to back to back to back to back to back, we just put something, just put something, video, text, anything, just be put it, just be put it. The world must hear. I have an urgent message. So I know what I'm doing there. I'm not just going, I'm not a content girl, for, I'm a content provider. I put content, 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 and people are collecting, 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 collecting. Do you get what I mean? So it's about structuring. Do everything with intentionality. I'll give you another example. Uh, because somebody just asked um, that, and um, I have a minimum mark for social media every day, and I don't sleep until I meet it. Minimum. For a while now, I've been putting out three things a day, every day. If you like, let it be five like or one million likes. It's not my problem. Do we plan, of course, to get more engagement? Of course, it's good because the, the more the better for the message, right? But there's a minimum mark, and you keep the minimum mark. So it takes sleep off my eyes until you meet it. So structure your life. Set the targets that are to be daily. People said yearly things that they do not be giving excuses. Excuses. No. If you don't break your goals into short-term plans, you will not work. All right? I must see this on the short term. What next? And that's why we, we start every year, for instance, as a ministry with a structured next year. Yeah. So when the journeys come, it's not like, oh, oh, yeah, setting, we live we give that allowance for some doors that are open that is right to take, but by October, October-ish, the next year is already clearly defined because there's something that should bind us, all right? Very, very key. Let me run through this quickly. I'll be faster with the rest so that we can, I guess some people will have questions right here. What does a healthy friendship look like with a man? Can single women and single men comparable dating ages, of comparable age, dating ages, just be friends? And if so, how? Yes and no. <clears throat> Most men cannot be your friend for nothing. Most men are hunters. They can start pretending that the friendship has nothing in it. It's a lie. The day they see crack in the wall, you realize that their nail can actually you know, be nailed into the wall to hang a picture. Yes because life is about relationships. But here's the deal. You must learn to be quick to discern when a relationship should have romantic interest or not. So that you don't date everybody you are supposed to be brethren with in church. Because that's the problem other people have. Small attention, they're already collapsing. Mm -mm. You need to learn to manage attention. All right? Of course, and to limit attention because it's attention that breeds affection. All right? Um, that's why I tell people, there's an extent to which I should not even care for a person, no matter how I care. I'm married. I'll send the wrong message or get into their emotion in a way that I create struggle for them. So, so um, adult relationships should have a basis. Mm, are we colleagues? Are we in the same department? This one you are checking on me night and day. Anybody you have to talk to every day, even if you do not agree you are dating, you are dating. Every day you are talking. You are not colleagues. You are not in the same department. Not, there's no basis. It is just two of you. You are inside something. Mm. And that's where situ situationships begin. That's why you will not say he broke your heart when he married somebody else, when he has never collected your heart. So how, how did he break what he did not collect? 
But he collected it through conduct. So I tell you, one of the things you do, especially ladies, one of the things you do when a relationship is going in a direction that is not defined, define it by action. Let me give you an example. Somebody that has come to the point where they feel entitled to your response, open their message on WhatsApp, read it, don't answer for three days. See, I don't want to lie. Let me give you an example. One of my friends, she's also a minister. I told her that me and you, the temperature is not, the gauge is not okay. The temperature is, she said, hey, she did holiness. Ah, no, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. I said, no problem. Ah, you think I'm imputing sin? I'm not imputing, I'm just telling you. You know, it was not even everyday talk, but there's a way, the vibe I was getting from her is not, of course, she can't even cross the line, but the dependence. So I brought it out so that we can, let's close the chapter, let's know. She did, eh, hey, hey. I had one weekend, I decided to go offline from Friday to Sunday. I came back online. She chatted me normal, like, what happened, blah, blah, blah. I said, I traveled and I wanted a weekend. Oh, come on. I told you I don't leave because of the ministry you do, right? I said, yeah, I just said it. And the next thing that slipped off her mouth, and you couldn't tell me. I said, you see that thing I told you? Do you now see? Because there's something. There's a dependence. It's unholy. It is what it is. I'm not your husband. So you couldn't tell me. Blah, blah, blah. I took my chance. I said, that thing I was telling you, that she now said, actually, it's true. We are way, 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 way more apart now than then. Everybody took dressing. I'm telling you. So there are things that when you see, there must be a basis. What is making all talk all the time? Talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. So a flow can get you into a relationship you're not being. Coke can actually vibe. <laughs> so don't allow vibe carry you into what God is not sending you. All right? So it's okay to relate, but what's the basis of our relating? If there are basis, if there's a, a, a room, a ground for it, why not? Okay? But let it be so and let it be defined. When you talk about best dating practice, how do we distinguish between biblical principle and cultural preferences? Very straight. Any culture that does not offend the word of God, practice it for all I care. Yeah? Because there are things that are not written in the Bible, black and white, but they are rooted in Scripture. For instance, you cannot be filled and led by the Holy Spirit and not be decorous. Okay? So I may not... See, I don't use the open car for my wife. Let me not lie. Her hand is not pain here. I, I drive you, finish. I'm opening my door. I should go around. But I don't sit there. Open that door. <laughs> now, that sounds so wicked. But there are so many things that when I do... For instance, I saw a, a, a clip on social media yesterday. I mean, I've seen it before. I saw it yesterday again. And it made sense. This guy was negotiating. The wife was seated next to him. The wife was to bend to pick something instinctively his hand went to the edge of the table because the edge was sharp. And he positioned his hand in a way that if the wife is coming back up and hits it, she will not be injured. Then the wife sneezed. He was the one actively negotiating. Instinctively, he went for the tissue box, did like this and gave the wife. He was still negotiating. He did both without looking. Instinctively. Now, that's a man who is thoughtful and who cares. All right? So, I rather, I rather, you know, when it comes to this conversation, Fill in that role as a practice. But guess what? People always want the what without the why. My why is why I do the things I do without thinking. Because the easiest way to be a wise husband is actually be a husband according to the standards of the word of God. And that standard tells me that my wife is my priority. I mean, so much of a priority that the first thing God warned Adam about and made Adam declare as a rule of marriage is leaving your parents. When Adam did not have a father or mother of his own. Genesis 2.24. Who was Adam's biological father? Adam uttered those words through revelation, not by experience. Say, for this cause, a man will leave father and mother. Uh-uh. Uncle, where your own? He didn't have, but he was speaking to us who would have. Do you get what I mean? So that principle tells you is the principle of priority, the principle of value. In essence, my wife occupies the first, the best, and the highest human place in my life. So whoever you are is not a matter. Do you get what I mean? So, certain things that culture insists on, especially when it comes to Western culture, for instance, is just trying to mirror principles that are too deep in God already. So, if I sit in God, then I give you another example. Because certain times also, what you do is that you bring a balance to the practice of culture versus the principles of Scripture. There was this guy, story is told, I believe it's real life story, I've even told it a couple of times when teaching. He was the firstborn of his family, but the last that got married. And there was a culture in their home that when they gathered for a family occasion, the person who married last, their spouse would be the one to do the chores. Yeah, because they were all brothers. 
So they gathered and he told his wife, you know what, we're not going to argue with this because we also are not in the world to just be fighting every culture and causing family problem. Wisdom is profitable to direct. So he told his wife, this is the culture and I don't want to fight it because he could have come up, I'm the first son of this house. What kind of useless culture is that? Mm, oh God, calm down. So the wife got in the kitchen. All his brothers, younger ones, their wives were relaxing and chilling. Guess what? He took broom and entered the compound because he knew there was a counterculture that your elder one should not be doing any chore and you're sitting. All his brothers and their wives rushed out. Brother, no, no, no. He said, no, let's all do it together. So his wife was not left alone. He had just used wisdom. All right? So God's intention is for us to use his word and any culture that doesn't offend his word to live a balanced life. Do you, do you get what I mean? So don't make them fight where they are not fighting. There are certain cultures that are good. If I can open door, I open door. But for now, no. <laughs> As an introvert, how am I supposed to meet a man when the older I get, there are fewer natural places for me to do so? It was not your place to go and be looking for a man in the first place. The drama I acted is enough. Live your natural life. God will send you to places. For instance, my wife didn't need to think about all the things we were talking about when her movement was happening across campuses. But God was repositioning her. Just like a lady. Do you know she, she had this nudging to register for a gym and she looked at herself like i, I feel so fit what's this whole but she just obeyed guess what the day she registered in the gym was the last day her now husband was using that gym guess what he was not just using that gym for the last day he was starting a business of his own setting up a gym so it was his last day he just wanted to have his last workout in that gym she was having her first day of registration in that gym and that's how they met they're married so she's now the owner of a new gym when she was fit enough not to have registered for that other gym. But the nudging of the spirit came. So your personality type is not the issue. Introverted, extroverted. Some extroverts are looking for a husband because everybody thinks they are too loquacious and too loud. So they are everywhere you are not, but they are not being... <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's not, not, there's no personality God cannot place. If did not speak a word in all the scripture we read, in that sense, she was introverted. Pim, she did not say. God created her, opened her eye, walked out to the man. Adam began to yearn. Did you not see scripture? Have you read where Eve said anything there? Mm -hmm. Time will fail me to go into where Eve spoke, and she spoke wrongly to a serpent. <laughs> because I teach men to know how to stop their women from speaking to serpents. Do you realize every... Do you realize women follow prophets in this generation? Speaking to prophetic serpents everywhere. Because their men don't know. Hi, <laughs> let's not go there. Time, 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 time. Hi, Jesus. Mm. What are some things of which I need to be aware of in my relationship with the male ministry colleagues? Everything I said. In fact, I gave you an example. <laughs> I gave you an example. Boundaries. Ba Do you know there are conversations that when somebody starts with you, you're already crossing the line. You have not committed any sin. Then, in fact, maybe when you have a little check, say, now say, feel free. I'm not feeling free anything because this thing are going down. Mm -hmm. When conversation begins to touch body, sexual preference, this one, that, you are crossing everything there is. Uh, even how you're having sex with your own spouse. Ah, is that private business public discussion? But it starts with chat. You know, chat, chat is where everything is possible. Even the most timid of people are bold on chat because they are not having to confront the person to talk. All right? So here's the deal. Share a ministry, ministry. Keep it to ministry. What do ministry people discuss? What the Lord is saying. <laughs> and normal care. Normal care. If somebody, see, if somebody, for instance, one of our team members, they are, they are now in the UK, lost his mom. I mean, he's on his way to Nigeria when the wife told me. I owe him to follow up with him. You know, one of our guys, he ministered, we're, we're not our program now, we're on a program where I ministered and he also ministered. And he told me he was living for Lagos. Now, he's even male. I mean, so later on in the evening, I was reaching out to him, checking on him, and he now asked me, Pastor, what else did you reach out to tell me? I said, I didn't reach out to tell you anything. I was checking on your journey. And he's like, sir, wow. I'm like, I know we all travel a lot, but from the moment you told me you were headed to the airport to travel, I owed you a duty to check on your trip. So it's not one of your trips that I don't know about. I'll just see online, you're in Lagos, you're in Port Harcourt. Uh -uh. This one, I was involved with you at the point of departure. I owe you a duty to reach out to you and be sure. He's, he's like, wow, oh my God, I just learned a big one. I said, it's just normal. 
Because it would be callous of me not to. Not that your plane crashed. It's a moral fiduciary duty I, I owe you. All right? So if it's ministry relationship, keep it as ministry. It is what it is. Don't cross lines. Because, see, it is so, this generation is easy to cross line. Why? It's over here. Line number one, sometimes you even cross in the name of ministry relationship. What are you doing chatting somebody at 11 p.m.? The hour is not good. It's not good. The hour is quite private. The person even happens to be married and you're of opposite sex. What exactly are we doing talking at that time? Bantering away, not an emergency, not SOS. No, you're not even 911. How? Do you understand what I'm saying? It is well. Mm, it is well. How am I supposed to fit into church family when I feel invisible every Sunday as an older single person without children or divorced or widowed and all of that? Ah, oh, I really hope I get that scripture. Can you give me First Timothy chapter 5? I should get that scripture. should get that scripture. First Timothy 5, let me hope. Um, otherwise, I'll give you reference for how we get that. First Timothy chapter 5 doesn't look like me. It looks like text. <laughs> Still waiting. Is anybody on the council for scripture? Let's do it on the phone. First Timothy 5. Good. The, uh, okay, any translation is fine. Let's, let's just go. Don't be harsh. Verse 2. Aha. Reverently honor an older woman as you would your mother and younger women as sisters. Next verse. Thank you. Take care of widows who are destitute. But you are going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Next verse. If a widow has a family member, has family members to take care of her, let them learn that religion begins at their own doorstep and that they, go on, should pay back with gratitude of what they have received. This pleases God immensely. Next verse. You can tell a legitimate widow by the way she has put all her hope in God. This is what anybody who feels slightly or for any reason out of place should do with the house of God. Now watch this. Now this is specifically to the widow, but we're going somewhere. Whether senior single, younger single, whatever. See, God is the first family we must find our place in. Please don't leave the scripture, all right? Now, you can tell a legitimate widow by the way she has put her hope in God praying to him constantly for the needs of others as well as her own. Now watch this. So the attention is not me, 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 but a widow who exploits people's emotions and pocket books. Well, there's nothing to her. Next verse. Tell these things to the people so that they will do the right thing in their extended family. Now if you read that scripture, in, verse, in fact, this is why I told one of our friends, she's, she's now in a relationship headed to marriage. She lost her husband quite early. The marriage was just one year. About one year, yeah. And she stayed single for quite a while. And please, can you change this to New King James and go back to verse 4? You know, and she told me something. Oh, that stayed with me. Because she was, she's not 60. Because the Bible does not even reckon a widow under 60 as widow in the sense of widowhood. Reckons her as a single person. All right? But if any widow have children and nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to, uh, to requite their parents, for that is a good thing and acceptable before God. Five. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in God and continued in supplication and prayers night and day. Next verse. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. She told me then that this is the scripture that God used to solve her. Like she knew. Because a lot of people don't even know how, I, I, I'm deliberately going here, you know, how vulnerable some people are because of where they are. So, I mean, she saw things. You know when you expect that people will be righteous towards you and people are showing all manner of unrighteousness? A guy in church showed up, a man, I mean, was supposed to sponsor her to this very America to study, for that study, blah, blah. She sat one day, just saw one million but she now realized that the man, married to a respectable member of the church, was setting her up just to be sleeping with her. Excuse me, I'm just a young widow. 
She said she had to come to this scripture and sit in this scripture and told herself she's not a widow. She's under 60. She said this scripture jumped at her. She that liveth in pleasure while she lived is dead while she's alive. She said, is this, what, is this what I'll be reading? Do you know what she did? She asked the man for his account number. The man did not give. She found the account number someone and sent his one million to him and told him your money perish with you. Do you get what I mean? So, whether it's single or widowed, what you need to do is to take your place within the righteous standards of God and find family in the church body. Do you get what I mean? It's so important. See, my, my, it, it, it's, it's as I matured that I saw what my mom went through. Because my parents were actually divorced quite early. My mom was just 30 or so, 31, 32, 31, 32. But she had told us, as young as we were, she had told us she was not going to remarry. So, do you know what my mom spent her life doing? She spent her life serving Jesus. She died um, at 52. She spent the rest of her life serving Jesus. It's my dad that remarried and remarried. She told, we're so young, she told us she's not going to marry. She focused on Jesus. See, do you know the routine in my house when my mom was alive? One month to my wife's due date, my mom shows how she gets her permission from Kogi State Government where she was working, I don't know. And she stays one month after Julia delivers. That's two full months. Guess what? For that month, we don't see baby. I'm telling you. There are things I stand on today, I know who prayed it. We, you don't see the baby. Oh. She only brings the baby like two or three times and all the, the two children she saw, they cooperated. Through the night, go to the door of the visitor's room where mommy is. The baby is on her chest. Makala, katopra, throughout them. I'm not kidding. Lambra, kata. If the baby starts crying, she brings to the door, knocks, gives Julia, waits there. You breastfeed the baby, she takes the baby back. Lambra, da kaba, la kabra, do kaba, la kabra, da. That's a decision she made. All right? Can we go slightly deeper? Matthew 19 from verse 10, message translation. Matthew 19 from verse 10, message. Thank you. Jesus, good. I, I, because of time, I will not go back. Read this in context. Jesus began to talk about divorce and how it's a result of hard-heartedness and his disciples objected. I said, was Peter planning to divorce his wife? I don't know. Jesus' disciples objected. If those are the terms of marriage, we are stuck. Why get married? Time, no day for the talk. Verse 11. Watch this. But Jesus said, not everyone is mature to live a married life. Total subject for another day. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage isn't for everyone. Watch this. Next verse. Some from birth seemingly never give marriage a thought. You knock. They are not bothered. Not people like us. We will give it a thought. You and I. Others never get asked or accepted. Now, when I preach from this scripture, I tell believers, don't become agitated. <laughs> Is that my situation? Now, Jesus was speaking in the Old Testament. The New Testament began with his death and resurrection. Do you understand? Jesus was stating the facts as they are. What's your situation? The balance to the scripture of Jesus, I'm not saying Jesus like, is Mark 11, 24. What things ever you desire when you pray, believe you receive. What's the difference between desire and what James speaks about in James 4, 3 or so, that uh, you pray and receive not because you pray and miss to squander on your lust. Desire is what I want that God wants. Lust is what I want that God does not want. Do you get the difference? Does God want me married? I can give you thousands of scriptures that show that your desire is not wrong. So this scripture does not apply to you in the sense of, hey, it will not happen. But Jesus was stating facts as they are. But guess where he's going to? Watch this. Or ask, and some decide not to for kingdom purposes. Yeah, go ahead. To get married for kingdom reasons. But if you are capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, do it. Are you seeing Jesus' condition? If you are capable, do it. So the marriage itself is not the bus stop. It's not the end of the equation. Different persons are described in this scripture but their purpose is still larger. One even chose, I say, I'm not doing it for kingdom purposes. But I want singles. Don't do it because I'm now frustrated. Nobody's accepting me. Or nobody's asking me. Out. So eh, it's not frustration it's that I decided. All right? So it's not because it's not happening. No, I decided. I watched my mom do it. If she wanted to remarry, she would have remarried. Do you get what I mean? So in that state, whatever it is, whether widowed or this, the first decision, first of all, is that God, it is you and I. Then any other thing can follow in line with that. Okay? How am I supposed to feed? Okay, that's the one. What does it mean to be content in my singleness? What I was explaining. Until I see the picture, I will remain here. Because we live in a world where the truth is, both in and out of church, you have to reject a lot of people. They will not fit. 
All right? But here's the deal. If you think that that means automatic frustration, you're also joking. Because a prophet once cried out, God, I'm the only one. God said, ah, 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 ah. you're missing it. You're missing it. 7,000, 7,000. What's the difference between one and 7,000? And like I put in one of the recent videos I, post, I, I, I thought I posted, do you know there's a remnant for the remnant? So I tell people, you know, I was on one forum teaching yesterday, and ladies asked me a question, I laugh. They talk about the death of brothers in church. There are no good brothers. I say, who are they sleeping with? Animals? Girls. I say, should we start talking the atrocities of church girls too? I'm not saying it to, to hit back. I'm telling the fact. Straight fact. So, you are talking to church boys. Church boys. Church, have you talked church girls? So, what I say is, why there's general nonsense, you step aside and be different. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. So you stand out first. Let God bring the other standing out person. Because purpose will meet purpose. Mumu will meet Mumu. Deception will meet deception. It's just like the guy who came to church to find a good wife. Who coincidentally met a lady who came to church to meet a good husband. Everything is solved. Both of them are not church members. They came for something and they got what they wanted. Do you get what I mean? So, <laughs> hey, so yeah. No worries. No, no, no. no. Maximize your singlehood. Be content because you know in whom you have believed. Now, that's a, a, a subject for another day. But um, what I've said is to just touch it. Just, just scratch it. See, you can never be content until you are content in God. I'll give you an example. I'm a very missionary kind of person. Forget that I'm doing it in the modern way. I'm going to cities and not inside bush bush. The number of trips I have made in a way that is economic disaster. Only God <laughs> can save me. <laughs> I have made trips like this that... No, see, you know when your plan has finished, but you are just going. You know when you are making a two-week trip or one whole week trip, and you are only able to carry one day in practical sense, and you are stepping out in faith. The same principles of faith of the kingdom is the principles that keep you content as a single. Number one, Satan, don't waste your time. This is not a medical condition. It is somebody who is sitting in God's will and knows that I am not out of order. There's a God orchestrating things beyond my anxiety. That's principle number one. So when I deal with that, what am I doing? Contentment will begin to come. I will realize that, look, 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 this is not about worry, this is not about having sleepless nights or orchestrating things by myself. All right? And some of the things I thought then. What is... The burden of a person whose partner has been called to fulfill a purpose. What kind of character should a significant other embody to support the other's achievement and purpose? Very good. I love that question. God equips partners for partners. I give you an example that should be common in America. Joyce Meyer is on TV because of Dave Meyer. A lot of people don't know. Dave Meyer also teaches. So. I watch him teach. I've read a book he wrote. Not that I can't teach, not that I cannot write. But he found his place in life that I came here to enable this woman. In fact, when he sorted her first subscription for TV, she was still in disbelief what the man was doing. That's how much she doubted it. Hope you know a bit of her story where she was coming from in terms of abuse. Her father abused her to the point that her father was abusing her in the car. A cop caught him and rather than be arrested, he handed over his daughter. The cop slept with her her right there also not to arrest him so and this was not her first marriage so just may came with all manner of baggages the first help the mayor was was to first of all make you believe in you so he had the equipment to be encouraging she had the equipment to ins he had the equipment to insist that your history is not your destiny i get what i'm saying now there are two ways you are equipped for your significant order number one you find natural strengths that you don't even have to struggle natural They'll just be there. Number two, you find things that you know you need, but you are not yet equipped for them. You go for the equipping. So you may take courses. You may take um, uh, seminars. You may find yourself going for things that would equip you for what you know you need to be, but you are not. So you know what that guy is right now? My God, he's the backstage of everything you can see. He's the one administratively putting things in place. All right? So whether it's from your natural strength or from the one you have to go and develop, the most important thing is to know and discern what help should I be here. Praise God. 
I've exhausted these ones. Do we have anyone here? I know the time is shooting down. Come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my question is, with regard to the um, play that you acted, is that in our modern times, um, people have op options. Adam didn't have options. So how do you relate, or how do we relate to that? I, I love your question. Your, op your option is based on narrowing. Option is about narrowing. You know, I, I was teaching somewhere and a question like this came up and I'm like, look in this room. I'm not an option. Straight. Now, as easy as it is to call him not an option because he's married, it's as easy as it should be if our spiritual eyes of discernment are open. Do you get what I mean? So the question is usually actually how discerning we are. Do, do you get what I mean? Now, unfortunately, what happens is... Um, because of our interest, we are often not as discerning. That's why you have people dating people who should have just stopped at being brother in the Lord. But because this guy shows up, he meets certain criteria, age-wise, maybe two years older than I am, or one year older than I am, it appears to fit, happens to be from this nationality and that nationality. All of that beclouds our judgment. And rather than discern, don't forget they are taking their families, wives and, wife and children, but David still inquired of the Lord, should I go after them? Why? His victory in the pursuit has something to do with the instruction he has received. So you have to discern people. There are people that, the, the honest truth is that some people will come and tick all the human boxes you know. Like this guy is cool, this is this. But a fool says inside there is no God. This one does not know God. Where do I start from? Tick off. So Adam had one. All right? But we can identify one. So, as is an identification game. All right? I bring in one more thing from law practice. It happens very well even in this country because it's a universal law of, um, when it comes to criminal uh, practice. Why do you think they do identification parade when there's a crime committed? Where they put the people in a room and bring this person out to use any of the things they remember from the uh, site of the crime to identify. At that time, they have profiled them. So, if the person is 5'6", they bring people who are five, six, six, seven, the different heights. Bring people who look close to this person. Why? The principle of law is very simple. It is better to release a hundred guilty persons than to convict one innocent person. So you, you, you test the person's ability to remember what happened during the commission of the crime by bringing people who are quite similar because you want to make sure that this identification does not spot a wrong, innocent person. Do you get what I mean? So the believer in the modern age is in an identification parade, trying to pick what is God saying, or oh, this crowd I can see. Yes, there's, there's been thunder, there's been uh, um, lightning, but the Lord was not in it. He just came, still small voice, that is it. And that's why, in fact, in my book, Knowing God's Will for Marriage, my books are on Amazon, by the way, that's one of the things I dealt with. I dealt with visions, trances, um, audible voice, inner voice, pastor, prophet, parents, all those voices. And I have to just discern and stick with what the Lord is saying. Because Satan will dumb me the voice. Ah, just like the prophet Samuel. Somebody just become me. Satan will just scream to your hearing. In fact, you now feel like, I've never heard God that loud. That is him! But discernment will say, mm, Satan... Please calm down. I know I desire this thing now, so don't lie to me. Praise God. At this point, we have to take permission for pastors. The hands are going up because it's 42 seconds, 41, 40, 39, 38. <laughs> Go ahead, though. <laughs> so, my eyes will be looking towards pastor from this point on. <laughs> So I think this is a short question. From the course of your teaching, um, especially the, the one on um, naming, how like, you know, Adam had to name the animals, um, is that specific to a man? Because when I, I mean, you were talking about men, but is that specific to a man or um, do women also have a responsibility, so to say, of identifying and like naming? Like, okay, even if this person is approaching, it's like this is not in line with what... Um, maybe the picture, if the woman even receives a picture as well, but the, also the picture. You are spot on correct. What I say to one, I say to the other. Now, the naming and the naturing is a primary responsibility of the male. 
All right? But the female must identify based on godly standard and specific instruction. Those are the two things the female must identify based on. Godly standard and specific instructions. Now, what's godly standard? For example, uh, 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what fellowship has light and darkness. Number one, uncle, you must be born again. All right? So I'm not just out here for anybody. You must fit into a picture. So there's a godly picture based on godly standard. Then number two, there are specific instructions God has given you. Do you get what I mean? All right, of course, it's to discern how a man fits into that place. But somebody may come around, good for another person, but bad for you. So the lady is also not blank. In fact, that's the basis of her rejecting the number she rejects in this modern world. Because if they didn't have to reject, because the only one that God brought was actually the one, but you now have the responsibility to identify Adam. Because you are actually going to meet Adam, Steve, Paul, you are meeting all of them, but it's to identify Adam. And you identify Adam by what the Lord tells you. And I love the way Pastor Mildred Okonko puts it. I was somewhere she was teaching, and she said, in the day that we chose our husbands, we received them before we got them. So the receiving is here. And there's a principle of scripture that even makes that very simple. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, what things ever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. Having comes after receiving. It's just like I sent money into your account, now you got a notification. But the cash is not in your hand. All right? You have received. It's when you go to the ATM that you pull out the cash and you have. All right? So at that point, if I have $20,000 and I'm going to take $5,000, before I had $5,000 in my hand, it doesn't mean I didn't receive. It already existed. So I went out. I was not surprised when the $5,000 came out. I said, oh, hey, oh, ATM, thank you. Ah, you brought $5,000. No, I had it. I just pulled it out. All right? So the female also has that role to play. But you see this thing about, now, I'll just rush that because of time. You see this thing about the place of the speaking man. It's an entire message I teach. Now, that's why in Ephesians chapter 5, the man, do you know, my wife doesn't present herself to me. I arrange her and present her to myself. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus does. Why is he spending so much time washing us? Because he wants when he comes for us to appear in a certain way. So he must be hands-on from day one, ready to make you, not because you are not made, but ready to show that responsibility God has given him. That's why I'm amazed. Men will just come, and, and the man has this, uh, Uncle, show it. It's not by shouting. Conduct, show it, wash me. Talk to me in a way that evokes my beauty like we read. Do you get what I'm saying? So my responsibility in life, very simple assignment. Serve the Lord and dazzle my wife. Just She's just my object of, do you get what it's, it's, it's my focus. I just scatter her dada, even though she doesn't have dada. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Where's that Adam? You see, like, oh, you now, like, in case you would just decide to, do you understand? You just, these are white, you're just making whiter and whiter. Thing. <laughs> Pastor has not said anything, so let's, <laughs> let's, let's. Okay. Um, so, my question was regarding a post that I seen on social media, and it was talking about how people in current relationships would usually get 80% of what they're looking for, and the other 20% they might find it in someone they don't know, and then be attracted to that person, then leave the relationship with 80%, chase the 20%, and end up with 20%. So, in cases like that, do partners begin to talk to their partners already giving them 80%? I say, oh, this 20%, I want it from you. Or, I, or realize that you can never really get 100% from somebody and settle down. Or you just close your eye, even if you see the 20% somewhere, you just accept reality that it's always going to be 80%. Thank you very much. Your question is the best question in the world right now. Because <laughs> we live in a world where people want the, what they want. And that's a problem. Nobody's ever, ever, you know, we sing some songs in church and we don't mean them. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, yeah, the cup that won't run dry. The void that we feel very often can actually not be filled by anybody. I love your 80-20 analysis. Because a person who is now seeking that 20 is actually going to a deficient 80. Do you get what I just said? Because that thing you think... The moment you take out of that 20, you just realize that this 20 cannot even satisfy as much as where you're coming from. See, there's a satisfaction you get in marriage that doesn't come out of the person you marry. At all. I'll give you an example. If God gave me what I thought I wanted, I would be in total disaster today. Because sometimes we need to even interrogate what we want. 
Do you know there are a lot of things you want that are purely Hollywood, not God? Holy, as in Hollywood. Do you know even in this country and across the Western world, a little over a hundred years ago, models were plump people, not slim people? Hope you know it is Hollywood culture that is causing this nonsense. And especially for my brothers in Nigeria and sisters who have never been to America, they think everybody in America is slim. <laughs> because Hollywood culture has given them slim women. But they have hidden all their people that have added weight. Do you understand? Like me now, I didn't marry broom. I knew from day one, I knew what I wanted. So culture did not zap my brain. I know somebody who went and married because the city we're living in that time, it was fashionable, especially ministers, to marry ladies that they say, you see my wife, she, after 10 years of marriage, she's still like this. I'm watching regret happen before my eyes. Because married according to popular opinion. Do you get what I mean? So you need to interrogate. You like, you like fair, fair women, you like fair women, you like fair women. Now movie, magazine, something planted. It. Hope you know everybody was born blank, including Jesus. Or you think Jesus was coming out and saying, Mary, I know you. Look at you. I created you. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Jesus learned by the books. God himself becoming man went blank. So a lot of times we need to go and question, why do I think like I think? Why do I prefer the things I prefer? Why am I dissatisfied? Do you know there are things you know? For instance, let me give you an example. Somebody complained that they flew economy, right? Okay. Because the person is not putting things in perspective. Because you flew economy for two hours on a journey that somebody had to use two days, slept on the road, not even in a motel, to do perspective. So this person is looking at the person flying business or first class and wondering, why is my life? There's no problem with your life. It's perspective. All right? You are compared. And that's what the Bible says. They have become fools comparing themselves one to another. Are you get what I'm saying? So, see, there's a satisfaction that comes from godly contentment. Me, I'll give you an example. I wanted a Mike Slayer. And I once dated one. Unfortunately, she's even divorced already. When she holds the mic. Hey, hey. Oh my God. They everywhere will just scatter. But my wife is the glorified backup. Give her mic to lead music. You will see missing her keys and padlock. But as a backup, oh, backup. So I, I was not, that part did not appeal to me. If I, one of our recent monthly meetings, my wife was teaching. She now say one song, touch her, she wanted to sing I said, I don't enter. I don't enter. Even the backup people respect you for you want to destroy it. And she destroyed it. Baby, you watch this clip. I'm telling you, I'm not lying against you. She destroyed it. She raised a song. Me. Me that I'm not a song person, song person. That I'm not the choir. I will sing it better. She started with padlock, ended with key. She was just going like this. I said, ha, my mother don't embarrass me here. Do you get me? So there are things that you like, but they are not major. I will take my wife a billion times, I'm telling you, for who she is. There are strengths she doesn't have. For instance, I've been saying it publicly, so let me still say it. I interact with my wife's social media handle that she does. Her accounts are signed in on my phone. Because I need to cross-post a lot of things and I want her page active. So recently... I got her to a space where she set a target. She was writing every day. People were jumping from everywhere. My God, where have you been? You have not been writing. Thank you. Please don't stop. She has stopped. It's not her strength. You meet some people's wife, my God. Hey, when you see their social media, my husband is, my husband that, my husband is, my husband that. My wife can enjoy a total bad day with me without posting one thing in a social media age. I mean, she will celebrate me, adore me, cherish me, do everything. But you are there on social media pitying me. Where's his wife's post? You're on your own. It's not a strength. Does it look good when I see other people do it? Oh my God, this is how I started my day with my husband. You see one video. You see one reel. You see one this. I, she knows Sabi. She knows Sabi. Do I like it? Yes, I like it. Must I have it? No. In fact, my media younger sister's birthday was 28th of July. Did I get the date right? For they go and slate me. Yes. It was how many days ago my wife said, Jesus, I committed sin. She has been busy. She did not, she did not even see where all of us were splashing my sister. She splashed her own yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that first thing, if I call her, she will understand. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So I should say, I'm going to look for a girl now that can do social media. So you see, just major on what matters. Is this man a husband? Does he know how to love me as Christ loved the church? Nobody's going to come with perfect set of strengths. Nobody. 
I add one more for you. Every relationship has the more or less factor. There's an area of more, and funny enough, very often, the direct opposite of you will be your partner. And more in communication, for instance. Do you know what happened? My wife's birthday, 22nd of July, I was already in the U.S. I came in from 18th. Very funny. I was a minister at the conference. She was ministering somewhere where to be invited, but because I was going to be away, she was alone in Nigeria. Time difference, six hours. Got so kind, the host of that meeting in Nigeria asked me to do a video which blew my wife away. My wife was soaking in the moment and not talking to me. And I was literally bored in this, your country. Because I'm used to talking to her. I was looking for my wife. I couldn't, it's her own bed I couldn't find her. So, People, uh, some of our guys who also ministered at that program were there. So when the video came up, they played the video before they invited her up to speak. My wife lost it. She just, she was just, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because I was, I was speaking like a husband. I was saying, I was giving her. So they played the video on the screen and she was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was getting the feed, putting it on my status, putting it on social media. I still can't find my wife. At that moment, I will pull out the phone, even just before ministry, and send her a message. No message. Do you know how bad that feedback is to my emotion? I managed to speak to her in the morning. By the time I was mounting the pulpit, meanwhile, you refused to give me internet. I asked you for internet. When I got to the venue, I asked her for internet like I asked her. She didn't give me. She forgot, yes. Don't worry. It's because I wanted to talk to my wife. You see, I'm the more in communication. So here's the deal. Before I went up the pulpit, knowing that when I finish in Houston, she would have slept, I still left her a message. I was still loving on her. To my shock and disappointment, I came off the pulpit. No answer. I feel it's your own birthday. I'm struggling for your birthday. Other men travel. Their wives are looking for them. Me and travel. I'm looking for you. I came down for pulpit. No message. You blushed at the program you preach in the morning, my own time. No message. I left you message. I mounted pulpit. No message. I came down. You have slept in Nigeria. No message. It's your own birthday. The next day, I think we managed to talk once. And I'm alone. Two days later, we're talking. She said, baby, I don't like your mood. What's going on? She was all excited. The emotion still rolling over her. I said, madam, I'm not happy. You are frustrating me. You are leaving me stranded. This is 20 years of knowing this girl. Some weaknesses they will bring to your life, you will forget it. Get used to it. This is 13 years going. December, it will be 13 years of marriage. Our communication problem, I've not finished solving it. She has temporary repentance right now. But I know it will not last. <laughs> She's the one calling me more now. Because I, I brought salt to threat. Not because, of course, I didn't. I, I say salt to because it was not direct. I say in this generation where they buy company, you are leaving me stranded. I'm, I'm stranded. I'm alone. I'm alone. When I finish meeting, you know man of God thing. They abandon you where they abandon you. Do you did any of you visit me yesterday? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, people think men of God are angels. We are not angels. And I'm an activity man. So you know what was happening in Houston? Minister, back. Minister, three days break. Minister, four days break. What am I doing the time? Then I was living my life through Nigeria. So most times I have to be up for 3 a.m. local time because I need to give instruction to team, people I called asking me questions, blah, blah, blah. So by the time they are going to bed and it's about 5, 6 for me, I still have till midnight my normal time of going to bed to live with nobody. And everybody that is supposedly in my life is asleep. You don't know how this feels for a people person. They tell me I should have been praying and reading the Bible. Well done. That's the only thing I do in my life. All of a sudden, I just feel this hole. Where are my people? Where's my wife? Where are my children? Where are my colleagues? Empty. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, top it up with the communication thing I just told you. So I had to do small lecture. I said, madam, you know, go work like this. <laughs> but guess what? She's in temporary repentance. She will return to a mood. <laughs> and I will be here with it. So marriage... Wait, let me re-add this. Have you ever read 1 Corinthians uh, 13? Do you know the meaning of long suffering? To suffer long. Long suffering. Suffering for long. Because if we define love for what love is, uh, many of us don't want to fall in love with anything. We'll just leave love and go and rest. Praise God. 